Good evening. Hope everybody's had a profitable night in class up to this point. I have just a few minutes that I want to share a few things from God's Word with you. If you would turn with me to John chapter 3. I want to read a few verses. John chapter 3. We'll start in verse 5. This is Jesus talking to, to Nicodemus as, as he's come to him secretly. But Jesus speaks to him and says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And while I think many of us have a pretty good understanding of, of what Jesus is saying, these aren't easy things. You look in the next verse, and it's stumped Nicodemus. He says, how can these things be? But what I'd like to do is take a closer look at verse 8, as Jesus talks about uh, those who are born of the Spirit and how they're like the wind. I want to take a closer look so, so that we can understand what he's saying. And, and keep in mind the context. Uh, a couple verses prior, he's pitting the flesh against the Spirit, those that are born of the flesh and those that are born of the Spirit. And so at first read-through of, of verse 8 there, it might sound kind of familiar. There's actually a verse in the, in the Old Testament Scriptures, in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5, that says something that seems to be very similar. It follows the same pattern. And Solomon there in Ecclesiastes is talking about God and his works, and he says, just as we do not know the path of the wind, so we do not know the work of God. And so as we consider that and we think about the world and those of the world, it's, it's true, right? They don't, they don't know God. They don't know uh, what he's doing. They don't know what he wants for them, that he cares about them, because they disbelieve. They don't understand. And so maybe the same thing applies to Christians, right? That just like they don't understand God, who is like the wind, they're not going to understand us, who are born of the Spirit, born of God, and are also like the wind. And Peter says as much in his first epistle, chapter 4, verse 4, that they're surprised that we do not run in the same excess of dissipation. So I think we can look at this verse, this verse here in John chapter 3, verse 8 that describes those who are Christians, those who are born of the Spirit like the wind. And we can understand that that's kind of putting us in a similar category as God, that those who are born of God are like God in some way. But there's another statement here that's kind of uh, maybe overshadowed by this not understanding. I'll read, I'll read the verse from the beginning. It says, The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it. And we'll stop there. You have to hear the sound of it before you can fail to understand it. Think about God. God speaks to the whole world through his creation, and he's clearly understood through it, or at least should be. And Paul writes about that in Romans 1. And in Hebrews 1, right, God is speaking to the world now through his Son. So God is speaking, the world is failing to understand. But then what about applying that to the one who is born of the Spirit? To fail to be understood, you have to first be heard. You have to be taking the word out. God's Word, taking it out into the world. And we can talk about it in here amongst ourselves. Um, I know the community is invited here. You know, any, any time the doors are open, we invite other people out on our own. And we can talk here, but we have to take this Word and go out into the world with it so that we can be heard, that we can be like the wind. So I want to look at a couple verses in Ezekiel chapter 33 to see how, how critical this charge really is. So in Ezekiel 33, we'll begin in verse 6. This is God's word to Ezekiel. God says, If the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and a sword comes and takes a, per uh, a person from them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from the watchman's hand. Now as for you, son of man, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel. So you'll hear a message from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you will surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from your hand. 
And so God is talking about his word here and how if the watchman doesn't take the word out so that the people can hear it, their blood will be on his hand. And the same thing, it applies to us. We can't keep the word of God silent within us. When we go out into the world, we have to take it with us. And that's a very, very serious charge. And there may even be some here, not just out in the world, but here that, that are not yet born of the Spirit. Um, maybe they don't have a full understanding, or maybe they just haven't acted on their understanding yet. But in the same passage that we read, Jesus talks about what it takes to be born of the Spirit. John chapter 3, and verse 5, he says that the one who is born of water and the Spirit uh, is the one that can enter the kingdom of God. The one who isn't cannot. And so, as we look at Jesus' word here, if you believe what Jesus says, and you are willing to act on it, to repent from your sins, to become more like God, you know, like the wind, just as God is like the wind, you're willing to repent of your sins, you're willing to be born of water, to be baptized into Christ, then we have that very opportunity tonight um, for, any, for anyone who, who may need to have their soul saved so that they can enter the kingdom of God. And if anyone has any other needs, if they're struggling with sin or need prayers for some reason or another, then everybody here is willing and ready to pray with you, to pray for you, to encourage you however they can. But whatever your need may be, come forward as we stand and sing.